Okay, welcome to the second video for web designer web design for beginners. This is in line with the short course at University of Hertfordshire and we're using a Dreamweaver program here. This is CS3. It's very similar to 4, 5 and 6. 6 has just been released. There are a few tweaks. But what I do here will apply to all those um, Dreamweaver programs. It's basically the same. Dreamweaver has taken the policy to not really change much, which is great. Now this is the second video, and in this video we're going to be looking at table design, tables within the structure of your website. Now tables are something that's quick and easy. You can bang them in and not worry too much about having to plan out your site. Um, now that can be a positive, but it can also be a disadvantage. We're going to have a look at what happens with tables. So, we'll go through the procedure. Now, I have the shortcut up on my menus bar here, which has an icon on it which says uh, table. Um, now, the table will um, insert where the cursor is. Now, that is a standard rule for Dreamweaver. Things are generally inserted where your cursor is positioned. Now, this is slightly tricky because sometimes your cursor looks like it's somewhere else on the site, especially if you've got layers built up. So you'll be very careful. If you insert something that doesn't appear where you want it to be, then it might be because your cursor was in the wrong place. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert a table. And when you insert a table, it brings up this option here. Now, this stipulates the properties of the table um, to a certain degree. You can add more later. Um, but here, what we can do is we can add a uh, number of rows, I'm going to add four, and we're going to have two columns. Now you can have, this is set at 97% because that the previous website I was designing, I was using that particular setting. But we generally want to use pixels, potentially, and we're going to give it a width of say 700. We won't use any border thickness. Border thickness is quite an old fashioned type of thing to use in a site. It creates a beveled edge to the table which actually looks um, quite retro, quite old fashioned. Not a lot of sites use it these days. And then we've got cell padding and cell space and we'll look at it in a minute. But let's get that table on the page. So we click OK. And you can see that it pops up. It's uh, actually selected. And you can tell a table is selected because it has a thick outside line. Um, you can see the measurement of the table at the top in this information bar. And also you get the three um, squares that appear around the frame. Now these you can hover over and it allows you to change the width. And that's one of the things about tables. You can flex them out and change the width. Um, and it also updates the information on the top of the information bar here. You can see that has gone out to 600. 862. So, um, tables are obviously quite flexible. That can be a good thing, but yet sometimes they're difficult to control. Um, and when your site is very precise and it behaves in a particular way and you want it to look exactly like you want it to, a flexible moving table can sometimes be a bad thing. Tables aren't used as much as they used to be. Um, they tend to be slotted into bits of de design or bits of division tags that are specific and um, can control that table. Um, or they're used in a very, very simple site where you've got a table that may be positioned in the middle like this. You can position a table and get a center alignment there in the properties bar down the bottom you can see there. Now, um, what we're going to do is change some of the properties of this of this table. So what we can do is um, highlight it, um, change the background color. Now this CS3 has an option to change in the background color. In other um, um, Dreamweaver programs like CS5 and 6, that isn't on the properties bar down the bottom. Don't ask me why they removed it. I mean, I, I don't know whether there's a pop, uh, setting you can affect to get that back onto the properties bar down the bottom there, but it, it isn't there. It's, part of it's been removed and it's now a code specific aspect. Now I've just switched views there. We looked at this basically in the last video. You can switch views from design to code. 
All right, now here, this has, this little bit of code has been added into that. BG color equals, and it gives the color number there. Now that's within the table properties where the width, the height, and the border, and the aligner are, are to be found. Okay, so we go back to design. You can see it's blue. Now each of these uh, the columns ha have their own um, properties, and the cells themselves have their own properties. So if you click your cursor, remember it was where the cursor is, you click it inside the cell, you can go down to the properties bar at the bottom and select properties and change the color of that cell. We'll do the same here. Okay, and inserting some different colors. Incidentally, we're using um, a PC here. Uh, Mac's very similar. Um, some of the settings are different. Uh, some of the way it reacts sometimes are different, but generally, if you learn it on a PC, you can do it on a Mac. It's not a problem. Okay, so you can see our table here is starting to take some shape, add some color. Now, I can also add some text. Okay, and I will bold that. Now, um, you can see suddenly, if you change some of the properties within a table, it might affect the layout of the table. You have to be very conscious of that. You can control tables by inserting images if you want to control a width of a table or a height. You can insert an image which will exactly fit into that space and so the table pushes up against it. Um, so there's a table. Now the text itself also has properties. We can affect the text there, increase the size. Now we can do it slightly differently for each cell. Okay, so this here you can see each cell has its own properties. It's quite a handy thing, really. So you can change up the properties there. And um, let's just go over inserting a table again. So you can insert it from the shortcut, or you can also insert it from the menu at the top. So insert another table. We'll add, give it the same properties. Okay. And we'll, we'll center that one. As you can see in the bo bottom down here, you go to a line and click center. Now for this one, we're going to add some cell padding. Okay, so let's add some cell padding. Okay, now that adds it within the cell. All right, so it adds on some width within each cell. And you can see the cursor has some space above it. So if I add some text, you can see that this text is spaced off the um, particular uh, side there. So it's off the side, it's padded within the cell, which makes the actual table wider and and taller. Okay, so um, let's just click on the properties and you can see I'm accessing the properties down the bottom in the properties bar. You're going to add some cell spacing, okay. Now, that has pushed the actual walls of the cells outwards. So it's creating these thicker columns. So if I was to add some background color to this particular cell, like so, and then maybe click within a cell and add some color itself like that. You can see that the border, because of the cell padding and the, set, the cell spacing, is wider, which um, which can create an interesting design effect. So we'll select. You can also select a uh, a column like that and do background color, and it will do all the cells, which is quite handy. And quick. Okay. All right. So you can see the effect. The space within the cell has been pushed around by creating the padding and the cell spacing. Okay. So um, let's have a quick look here. Um, you're going to change the physical width in the properties bar down the bottom here. Um, and you can also add a background image. Now, if you want to insert an image uh, into a table, it's like anywhere else within the web page. Just go up to insert and select your image, and it will come up with a list of images, probably in your images folder if you if you've correctly sorted your files for your website. And there's also the shortcut button at the top here. Okay, so that is basic tables. Now, there's just one more thing to really bear in mind with a table, with the measurements of a table, it really only gives you your horizontal 
um, rule. A table will spring to the size of whatever is within it. So the, the height of a table is not set. Okay, so it's only the width that is set. Bear that in mind when you're designing your sites because they do move around a bit. So there's your basic. That That is how you handle tables in Dreamweaver. The next video, we're looking at division tags.